here. Okay. We are rolling. Yep. Welcome people okay. in the bridge. Right. So I can do a quick intro before we get going. Um, so the purpose, I assume we do not need the microphone, I'm loud. <laughs> um, I set up this session because um, I think Annika's a bit at a crossroads. Um, we're pretty mature. Our, our, our reference model, uh, I think, didn't change in this release, or if it changed, it was pretty minor changes. Um, it's a good solid framework. Um, apparently, stealth, a lot of companies are using it. <laughs> Um, I know the Verizon reads it. Uh, it informs their architectures. Um, but I don't think there's any company that's outright using it wholesale at this point. Um, but that doesn't mean that that isn't a really valuable thing. Reference architectures, um, which are also solid. Uh, the the RA1, which is based on OpenStack, is quite mature, of course, as, as is OpenStack. Um, and RA2, of course, is in active development um, as and keep keeping up with the CNCF, which is, you know, again, it reflects RA2, I think, quite uh, reflects where um, Kubernetes and containers are at this point, which is they're still still evolving. <laughs> yeah, but I think in in the next release cycle we need to update also RA one well, with probably, the new yeah. open stack yeah. versions. That's fine, but you know, I, I that's a pretty pretty straightforward thing to do. Um and, and I think our RI, Cedric, is anything happening with RI at all? RI and RB. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, and then of course the test we, you know, funk tests and all that is quite mature and um, actively used. Is that one question, is Silver considered to be like a reference? We are discussing. Yeah, we are discussing for, that. For Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that may well be the way we do it. We just yeah. say that Silver's RI, the equivalent. <laughs> um, so, no, no, the for open There is, but it's not maintained. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You you set it up. Even now, do you look at This, this is very hard to follow. You, you yeah. could come closer to microphone, please. We could come closer. Yeah. Oops. There's the mic over here. There's uh, how many people in the room? One, two, three. Not too many. Yeah, not too many. You can come. You can come closer too. I can give you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can give you this chair. Yeah, we should put the chairs on the other side. Hey, thank you. Okay, great. I'm loud, but not everybody is loud. Um, yeah, one one question on uh, Cedric. You said um, that um, you use DevStack for OpenStack testing and, and Kind for the uh, kind of Kubernetes part of testing, but the workloads are not tested. That is not maintained. Exactly. And is that something where CNTI could bring something to the table? Yes, because you also have a, a test framework that is supposed to test workloads. Um, so could that be something to 
uh, we could do what we are lacking, I would say, in, uh, from a CNTI is, uh, uh, let's say, a CNF, which is passing all the CNTI tests. Mm -hmm. So right now we are using core DNS in, uh, in any kit uh, to validate the infrastructure, but we could validate uh, also CNF test catalog via uh, sample. Mm -hmm. But and even now, the uh, is failing the CNTI. Exactly, test. because it's more uh, what uh, my understanding is they are using a CNF for uh, specific testing. Okay, so, so so you don't have a single CNF passing everything. You have many different uh, CNF for specific testing, mm -hmm. such as mm -hmm. CNTI test catalog. So mm -hmm. what I, and it's a pull request uh, I opened in a CNTI just to have uh, uh, one, one, uh, yes, one good sample, which let's say we pass maybe one hundred or let's say ninety. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the. What, what you're thinking about? Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we are thinking about um, actually a bit uh, open architecture of uh, CNN CN test suite in the way that we would build a stable base uh, like framework testing framework, and <clears throat> it will be possible to. Uh, have test case or plug in with test cases, set, set of test cases uh, from different areas. And so maybe you could um, write your own test cases and uh, implement plugin to CNF test suite and have uh, some functional tests, for example. Yeah. But I think that's that's one reason why I don't think that we need the certification program because even if core DNS cannot pass the test, like is a hello world passing it? Not talking about like real CNFs doing real stuff. That's a rather a philosophical question. Well, well, first, uh, core DNS is not really a practical example, and uh, it does not follow really all best practices. Um, like that's my issue. Like it's it's a thing that it's on it's the CNF, CNF, and even they don't pass the. <laughs> that's yeah, not right. Yeah. It's not what he's saying. It's, it's not as it CNF. Not, does not mean that it's, it's simple that so uh, it's I'm running. Running. sorry that we're going into a philosophical question of what yeah, is yeah. DNF before going to more practical steps. Maybe you should do what's practical test, steps. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's not divert from but, that. But definitely certification is not kind of a hard uh, rule certification. Uh, the best practices are rather uh, not really uh, hard and well defined or or exactly defined. It's rather uh, well, best practices, which some of them are applicable for all cases, some of them are applicable for most cases only, and uh, they there are some cases where some best practices are not really uh, relevant. So Just it's kind of experience-based and best practice-based, and not really uh, hard-defined rules. Mm -hmm. What what then can should do here is just to mandate uh, our own this case is on the CNTI this catalog. Yes, and then for that, create our tag, and maybe it will be different from the, 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 the official certification for at least two reasons. Yeah. So, the first one is, uh, I think, from an amicate perspective, a pass fail is better. I mean, whichever. Mm -hmm. if we have, I mean, let's say 30 tests, we must pass mm -hmm. all 30. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I think what, what we need is the, how to put it, the CNF side of PETAR's test. Because currently it tests the infrastructure if the infrastructure is compliant with the RA2 requirements, but nothing is testing if the application assumes those things from the infrastructure. And those could mm -hmm. be put into the CNTI. Yeah. Well, yeah, regarding well written uh, CNF example, uh, we have it as a open ticket in, mm -hmm. in our CNTI repo, and uh, we want to prepare it mm -hmm. well written uh, CNF accordingly to best practices and passing all certification tests, but we don't have it yet. And one, more, one more question on this test framework. So you said um, you could write the plugin, or it, it has like a plugin architecture to come up with your own tests. Um, so is there kind of an SDK that helps you develop these tests or, or how does it actually work? Yeah, this is idea for future. 
current paper. Okay. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> um, yeah, but then I think then it would really help adoption of this framework. You know, yeah. also yeah. nephew have these cases, and I think you are the cases that they have in mind are not really the cases. You... But I think there was a little bit of misunderstanding because yeah. Nephew is looking for a framework test nephew itself. They are looking I, for a robot framework or something like that. I don't but know. It, is but nephew still, still yeah. itself, all the controllers of nephew are there. Yeah, of course. Of course I, yeah, yeah, but that's I think that's a bit of a meta question. What they are after is that they would like to test their own functionality. That's that main. But that's yeah, different. Yeah, that's what Wim was asking about. Yeah, right? yeah. I know. It's kind of uh, I not the original the eye, intention of the eye, yeah. but on the other hand, if people find new uses for it, like the more the merrier, it's open source. So. Yeah. Just to, to clarify here, uh, what, what Anjit is asking is to so test case integration, we are post testing for CI CD and cook, cook results. Then we can have uh, workload testing, whatever it's VR CMTI or any other test framework. Mm -hmm. We will just ask for the integration with post testing. So mm -hmm. it could be in two ways. It could be in CMTI test catalog, but it could be also many other uh, test frameworks. We are yeah. not linked to it for the for the workload testing. Yeah, which is good but to be not kind of hard coding no. a specific framework. But yeah. And I was just curious if it's possible to develop these tests because obviously there's something missing. No, and to where can we develop these mm -hmm. tests that the industry kind of needs? <laughs> or I, well, I think CNTA is and a good framework. If frame there's a plugin yeah. framework that yeah, yeah. can be used, okay, that's good. CNTA is a good framework. We just need somebody who can write tests in whatever crystal language or what's the. Yeah, yeah so that, that needs one. to be some knowledge transfer, <laughs> I think, definitely. That and and you resource. Can up somebody or and a resource. A or something, you know? yeah, yeah. But again, in my, in my, in my view, uh, we should not enforce the test framework. Uh, we need to enforce rules for the CI CD. We need some rules about test case integration, but not the test framework itself. It could be in any language, it could, and that's the purpose, for instance, of post testing. Mm. You can select bash, Python, robot. Uh, yeah, but I think CNTI is a quite natural selection. For, CNTI is a quite natural selection for us because they yeah, are. But we should, yeah, agree, agree. Yeah, yeah. We should not uh, limit to this. No, no, we should no, 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 yeah. to use uh, your own. Uh, yeah, yes. we're, not, we're not limiting it. It's just. We're... For me, CNTI, this catalog is another framework like Tempest or, mm -hmm. or E3, E3 test. As yeah, and if you think about it, CNTI itself is leveraging other test. Uh, Framework, so they are. I don't remember now what, but they are using lots of other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like Kyberno. Yeah, yeah. Cubescape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think it's quite, quite normal. I, I heard yesterday uh, in Nashville they they want to use uh, Catalog. What is that? Sorry. What Yeah, 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 yeah. I never. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was, that was a new one for me. For me too. <laughs> yeah, this it's one. probably some Google thing. The Kubernetes test tool. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it came out of Google. But it's for the test Kubernetes. For just no, I think from the logo, it it's coming from the the company who developed this generic operator framework. Huh. I just forgot what is that. It'll say written in Go. Okay. Allow YAML based and tests are required in YAML, as I understood. Okay. Yeah, but it's testing the operators, it's not Kubernetes itself. So okay. it's it's a bit different scope again. Yeah. And we don't have anything like that. Do we need that? No, Anakin doesn't need that, I don't think. No, Nephew needs it, of course, because yeah. they are using Kubernetes operators. But... Right. But, but how difficult would it be to to create the plugin, if you will, the, the plugin interface to allow CN, CNTI to? It's currently yeah. just in idea based. Okay. You don't have anything like this. So, but, uh, well, again, our first step is to select uh, what we want from uh, the existing case pieces. 
Yes. But, but one can mm -hmm. add test cases to... Um, but it's done in array 2 now, so that's in no, array 2 we it. select the test cases. Ah, in array 2 we put the test case. What do you mean from the CMTI test catalog? Yes. In array 2? Yes. Uh, it was in, in SC2 before, but... <clears throat> Well, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let me just check. It is in. It should not be integrated right now. But it's not actual test cases, but we. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me find. Uh, in AC2, there were a chapter about uh, the test cases, but. Yeah, what I mean that the, that we are referring to this or this CMTI. No, yeah, so you've already put. Put some of it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the issue here, yeah. what we we have to check is uh, if uh, the test implementation follows uh, our guideline, because yeah. we are also about compliance, not about certification. So we cannot break uh, a real uh, cluster already a cluster already deployed. So some, uh, for instance, some uh, some test cases uh, uh, boots another cluster. So we have to check in detail what what each what each test is doing because uh, we are let's say it is not only about certification it's about compliance and verification. Yes. So that's why some test cases picked by the certification will not fit Anket. Yeah, so absolutely. Yes. That, yeah, that's yes. why this kind of work is. I mean, if you match the best practices, I'm fine, but it should not match right now test cases. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I was not correct. Yeah, okay. we are test we are matching best practices. So that, 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 that I'm, I'm fine with if it's about best practices, yes. But it does not mean that the, the test cases will be test will be selected by by any cat just because of our target and our rules. Yes. And let me just, and that's that's where this uh, Google Docs uh, document comes into picture. But now I cannot. Yeah, you showed that earlier. So this is what the CMTI guys did. Um, yeah, yeah, I know the document. Yeah, yeah, and they did an analysis on how to test the rest of, of the things. So I think that's a very good start. We just need to. Yeah, but uh, again, what we need is to check the test implementation itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On our clusters and. Uh, for instance, uh, one test executed by SERP put kind cluster uh, close to your own deployment. So mm -hmm. you cannot uh, you cannot fix this kind of test cases. Mm -hmm. We are not again we are not in a in a lab. Yeah. So I uh, okay we, we can try to match. So we need, but uh, there is a developer development integration work in addition to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, but we should definitely um, explore this further. Should this be potentially fold, get folded, the work get folded, whatever on ours, on the Anikit side, get folded into Quinnipiac? Uh, let's see if it fits. At the end, we should continue, and if we have something deliverable until the end of the year, then then we should fit it. That's why I think we would like to cut that release in, right. even in twenty twenty four. Right. Is that something that would be feasible? But the next GSMA is you tar we target September, right? Yes, but the next GSMA will be based on Pyman. Yeah. So that is because okay, so, so it means that we will have to cherry pick uh, chapter two and chapter three in Bayman uh, uh, for the next GSMA. E no, but is that what we did in in R1? But just to to make yeah. it clear. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. So V129 will be will be the target for the series in GSMA. Yes, let's okay. let's target that. But I will need to put it then to. No, the... you need to fix it. Yeah, because we don't have that in in the. Uh... In the current <laughs> Quinnipiac uh, project. Well, are we um, well, I was hoping we could put some connectivity to CNTI into into okay. the the new release. The Pyman's the current release, or not the current? It's the one that's getting released. 
now and then Quinnipiac's the next one, which is, I think it's the end, end of December because we're doing six months. Mm -hmm. Let me let me double check this three card because I think they already generated some document which was approved and blah blah blah. So something's already happening in GSMA side. I just I'm not just not aware of it because I'm ignorant of the GSMA things. But they had yeah. so if they if they have the document which yeah, was already approved, then we cannot change it anymore. Even if like GSMA needs lots of time. No, to... I know, I know the. GSMA. You know that the okay. GSMA could... process, but so I'm we still have what what the value of uh, an update mm -hmm. of the your first document without uh, AC two in it. So, well, it has lots of changes, other things. Oh, than... There's a break. And photos, and a half an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got chocolate chip cookies out there now. Oh. It's very interesting. But anyways, <laughs> let's talk I about I think that there'll still be some let's talk about GS, GSMA instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you say you say that you know the GSMA time and we still have a window of opportunity to to change the array two. Uh, I don't get it. You mean uh, we can change? But my, my purpose is uh, to 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 do it as you in uh, implement as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I would love to see uh, the GSMA document as well. So oh. if it's done, it's done. But uh, when is. when's the next GSMA? Don't they do? They do a release on an annual. I you can, you can, you can, I think you can. You can do it anytime. You need the penalization, I think, to put it. I, I'm not sure about any time. I, I just remember that we built out of the current specs that are being frozen as a release yeah. some version of this GSMA document that now goes through the process. And how far exactly this thing is, I don't know. Uh, but maybe there is still a chance to to put something in like like you're talking about. And maybe it's okay. not. Maybe this is already okay. passed and went through their machine, and they will now take the word document and produce PDF. Yeah, we should talk to Walter. He's the he's the master. <laughs> he's the master. Okay, then I will talk to Walter. Yeah. Ricardo. Maybe both. Yeah. Yeah. How how exactly is this in the GSMA process? Yeah, my understanding is the GSMA process is very, very formal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think there is actually a cadence, but Walter would know. Yeah, there is all of that. And that's what I'm saying. We just uh, built the Word document that is supposed to enter the GSMA process to produce PDF document out of it. Yeah, right. but now is there yeah, a but chance to change something still or not? I cannot say that. But because there's the review, there's, you know, you put it in and then there's a review period. Well, then, it's like, well, but I, I'm not sure about review because nobody else is reviewing, but the existing team, but GSMA team is now working on getting this PRD out of it. Permanent reference document with all the, whatever it goes in there. Because the document uh, is already published. So now it's about giving, well, diff to GSMA. It's just about diff between the uh, documents. Yeah. It's, it's another process as you publish first the first document GSMA. Right. Well, there are different releases of that. And I'm just I'm saying we are, we are doing just about to do another release of that. Okay. Either there are possibility to still add some changes urgently, and Walter and the team from GSMA need to say yes or no. Or that window is closed, and whenever there is the next release, is another window open for changes. Yeah. So yeah. So put in an action item to talk to Walter. Okay. Okay. Because I I know there's 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 a process cadence to the GSMA handoff, but I don't remember I don't remember the details of it. But he certainly does. Um, 
Okay, so could we, yeah. I don't know if this topic is closed, but uh, I would like to discuss uh, the open SSF uh, PR as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw some some YAML file uh, on uh, the Git repositories. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's quite irrelevant in our case to to an open SSF because it's about markdown. And we will fail mostly everything because uh, we don't have dependencies. We don't have many, many things created by. But the, this the open source work guide checks uh, how the open source project itself is developed. If you if you have reviews, yeah. if yeah. you have issues, if you so that's that's not about the actual functionality. What the project is doing, it's about the the meta layer. That's what that's what it it does. It does so, far more. It asks for dependable training in your Git repositories, uh, many things. Well, it. I understand. The, but I think so. It, it doesn't really matter if you are writing documents or writing code from this perspective. No, it, it asks for GitHub or GitLab actions, for instance. Uh, many things we should double check before. I think the, the topic why not, but uh, we we should not go fast on uh, on the scorecard. I think because even for the software project we are linked to Garrett, we are not linked to GitHub or GitLab, so we will fail mostly everything. Yeah, Garrett. Yeah, that's Garrett is an issue. No, but <laughs> for but for open it is. No, for open, yeah, 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 yeah. And I I I am struggling to figure out if they support Garrett or not. I don't think. In their documentation, they mention, for example, the reviews they can check with Gary, but I couldn't figure out if it's supported for everything. But I, now I just I put it to all the GitHub repos so far. But in the talk, there was a discussion that it will be a requirement for all projects to run it and reach a certain. In NFL? Yes. Yeah, but it has to be discussed. I, was it discussed in stack level? It was. Yeah. Because it's false by, it's false by design somehow. I think well, I think if it will be required, then. So why don't we ask uh, Mr. Tack over here? <laughs> <laughs> the open SSF scorecard. Yeah. So what I said is that in the talk it was discussed that it will be required for the projects to reach a certain. Yeah, it was in level. Discussed if it should some maturity level be, you know, for the level of scorecard you should reach. Yeah, like being gold, for example. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we should. Mm -hmm. I, I think Septic is right in the sense that we should have room for exceptions because for for a couple of these are not applicable. Like the like no, in yeah. the scorecard, there is a test for CICD. We do not have. Well, actually, yeah. we have. No, we are building the document. The problem with uh, OpenSSF is uh, there are many issues, uh, technical issues, which must be solved first. For instance, we are using Garrett. Yeah, in uh, in front test in cross testing, uh, we are not using GitHub, and if you run uh, open SSF again, the GitHub also may my error, mm -hmm. it will fail by design. And even there are a couple of open SSF hoops which must be checked because it's technically, I would say, I would disagree from a technical standpoint about some of the hoops, such as uh, forcing pinning all the the versions in dependencies, which is for normally you should manage abstract dependencies and concrete dependencies in the number of files files and open SSF is going to fit in for that. So yeah. I, 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 I'm hoping there is no rule in the, for uh, decided by the tag for all the, the projects because I, uh, it does not fit the Gerrit approach in NFL and even some of the rules are, I would say, technically false, I think. We had the same discussion with, I think, ODL project. Uh, yeah. They also said, well, mm -hmm. Some of the tests are not really applicable for us, and um, yeah. So I think we are we haven't been forcing anything. Okay. It was, however, we wanted to get to the point that this becomes part of the process. Yeah. We talk about security. That well, but could you? This is kind of uh, something that projects should strive for yeah. to make this test. And if there are exceptions or any. You know, part of these uh, tests that don't make sense for the project, that's fine. You should just document it, why it doesn't make sense. And and then it's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, there's like, going to be NA. Yeah, but uh, okay, but I think it's 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 good to improve the code quality, security in, in all the elephant project. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, it, 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 it has driven uh, OPNP, and now I'm okay for a while. If you look at, for instance, yeah. the rules, the linters executed in context of run tests is crazy. Uh, but uh, again, it it does not fit uh, the Gerrit project. Uh, and some Python rules are, are, in my opinion, are false. But that's, I think, if so that could be bringed up to the scorecard people. Yeah. Yeah. If you think what's the point to, if you do it in, no, because in an educate software project, it means that you are running something on the on the mirror, not on the code. No, itself. no, but I'm not. All, so, so the PRs that I created are for the specs. So they are not for the middle of the projects. I understand that it doesn't mean. Yeah, but uh, you will get a false, a false error, a false error because uh, you don't have dependable running on your project. So of course you don't have dependable because it's an RST project. Yeah, yeah, but that's so, what we should like see what what it says and what we should argue. This is why I put. Yeah. So I, the reason why I I created the PRs, I would like to see what it tells about the market projects so we can start discussing which yeah. are the yeah that's the which are, uh, which are I, the issues so first execute uh, so the, the, the binary against the repo and check what is failing before creating yeah. repo request on the project you should first locally what is happening what's the score we can if, do if that. yeah i was gonna say that's, that's, not, a, that's I, not a bad way to start that's what yeah. i did but i will mm -hmm. i will stop the the pull here for the pull request for from now until uh, we we run locally and agree mm -hmm. on uh, on uh, on the on the on the checks. But again, it, it should not be enforced at the elephant level because it will fail for uh, open delight. It will fail for that, any that... all the software project, all the gearing. Well, all the all the docs projects will fail too. So. Well, I think there are two issues. That's, that, a, that's the, a different issue. Is that it's, it, it doesn't support Gerrit at the moment. Yeah. So it will not give correct results for any yeah. projects which are developed in Gerrit. Right. Not uh, Jenkins as well. So right. it's not only oh. for Gerrit. It's about yeah, okay. just get there, there are 3,000 oh. Gentry jobs in Advocate. So it's a very yeah. good but, uh, PICD practices. But, uh, yeah. it's, it's our, our but that's a large very, very low because it's not about GitLab or GitHub. Yeah. But that, that's a larger problem that TAC has to deal with. That, I mean, it's not unique to Anakin, is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, because uh, Gary, you just mentioned that it may be enforced by the TAC, I prefer to dive by uh, the no, Anakin point not of view. Level. It okay. wasn't enforced on that level. No, no, that was clear that it doesn't work for all projects. Yeah. We discussed it already for ODL, for example. Okay. So that's, that's for sure. But we want to have, uh, like, it's still good to run these tests just to see where you are yeah. and what does make sense and what doesn't make sense. You know, and that's also kind of useful. It's learning process. And I but think then I can, I can come to the tag with the, the, my feedbacks yeah. or and get some software project if you like. Okay. Yeah, we tried. Yeah, we complete with Robert about uh, yes. how many issues. Really that would be really good because we tried to, to establish this security forum. That's the kind of place where we want to collect this between projects. And we have already a page there for the for each project uh, on these topics. So you could provide feedback there and that we get a good overall view of where our project is struggling with this and just to kind yeah. of get a better evaluation so, what yeah. tools make sense, what tools don't make sense, and so what baseline the exceptions we need to care of. Uh, so yeah, yeah. bring it to the top. And, That's good. Okay. Okay. So we have about 10 more minutes <clears throat> and I'd like to kind of take it up a level. I know we've been kind of getting into the weeds here and I think we've had some good conversations around incorporating CNTI, uh, Silva, I don't know, Nephio probably at some point needs to fit in with Anakit too. Has anybody had any conversations with the Nephio team? I mean, no, because I think currently they are more like uh... Like a set of proof, proof of concepts, and they are on the orchestration levels. So and it's all in really Google. Not really fitting in the 
in this Google Funnel They are not in Google, so it's... No, you, you it's, mean as a Kubernetes platform? I think they support more than Google Cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I know they, they do, yes. It's a generic thing. It's a generic not, not, not too many of them. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge. Yes. But over time... Yes, obviously. At some point, obviously, I think we're going to have to have some conversations with the other team, maybe when it's a little more mature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know if it, maybe it's too early, but what is the, what do you see that conversation evolve around? Because I, I'm saying for me, it's still descriptive. Currently, we are seeing that uh, you have to have a HM chart. So if NFEO will be a thing, then you can describe your application with NFEO constructs and maybe we don't require a chat anymore, but something what NFEO requires. We, yeah, we need that to see how it fit, fits I'm in. Glad that might be. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's still very amorphous, <laughs> as was obvious from sitting through. That's the, that's the only thing what I, I think. The only yeah. connection point to one look at what when you say when you supply helm charts in area two we say that you should have a helm chart for the workloads yes okay we have workload requirements right yeah and, and you get me help uh, make sure also on the, on the artistic sense to some test them up really have the block for that and the story yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's another story. And now they are in active discussion with Lincoln since yesterday to get some servers from. Yes, as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. so... Well, that will help. Nephew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, they were whining that, okay, you don't, we don't have service. And I said, okay, come on, this, this, this guy who gives you service. Who gives service for free. Yeah. So now they are, they, they, most of they, they will use, they will use Lab as a service to, to run their CI. Yeah, I know there's an print out. Uh, yeah, right. OAI are one have some resources that they can contribute. That's but right. it's not a lot. But that's like, I, <laughs> it's like two servers. Yeah, and it's a, still a promise. No, they have it, but it's not a lot. They oh. can it's it's available today, but it's about two servers uh -huh. in Iraq and France. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. It's a good start. It's more. Okay. Yeah. 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 Got to start yeah. somewhere. So, so I'd like to kind of, I know maybe this isn't quite the right audience here, but um, I'd like to kind of talk for the last 10 minutes about, um, so Anakit is kind of, I'm coming to realize it's like, the, it's the great secret um, <laughs> project that, you know, it's this mature project. We've, it's six years old at this point. Um, it's got a lot of great resources and it's like, nobody knows about it. Um, and, and I'm not saying we should go down the uh, certification route. Anakit Assured was clearly just not, not what our, what our, uh, sponsoring organizations were interested in, in the board. Um, I would like some thoughts about, you know, how can we get our organizations to, um, be willing to admit that they're using Anakit for whatever they're using it for, which is mostly seems to be uh, driving. Uh, I mean, obviously they're clearly using the tests um, and they're also using it to inform their architectures. Um, and, and maybe that's good enough, but maybe we need to get, we, we need to get that message out um, to our, to the, the greater, um, uh, ecosystem, if you will. So, I would say two things. One, already existing organizations that are inspired by Anuket, then maybe we can start with them. And you know, Jill is uh, well versed in yeah, getting uh, uh, quotes and stuff from organizations that might be willing to come. The other thing I was thinking as you were speaking just now is that since you said six years, I think the market landscape has changed. And yeah. maybe the end users you had in mind when you started are not the same ones. So 
Maybe you're barking up the, the wrong tree. Because... Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. I'm, I'm just yeah. as, uh, pretty much an outside advocate. Yeah, that's... Do... Ricardo? Or Petar? Hey, 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 Petar is here. So, Petar. so I, I, I agree. Maybe there's just two things to do. One is be more clear on which parts are active or uh, matured and which are archived. Be very yes. clear yeah, on yeah, that. I and I have my yeah. proposals. I, and, and the yeah. second part is, okay, let's go and do some more promotion. And then the question is how? I, I fully agree about the, the marketing here. I think we should communicate about our successes, not in a six months uh, cadence, but more. Yeah. And, uh, we are we have mostly released all of the deliverables. Uh, in GSMA, as we started, I think we should communicate uh, about that. There, are, and also, yeah, I will. I I did on the Alpha for Orange to communicate how we use, um, uh, and get, but maybe. This should have deserved a little bit more communication from uh, LFN or etc. Yeah, and 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 obviously I'll be more than happy to volunteer to to do. You know, we haven't done a webinar with the LFN in like ages. On yeah, let's kit. yeah let's do something like that for the promotion, and let's uh, sort the message separately and and for for the different aspects of uh, how CNTT got started. I think you're writing here already. So some are very stable. Let's agree on, on okay, which are still actively maintained versus what is archived and declare success on all of them and say that maybe what is written here, our eyes are not active at all. And therefore we are yeah, not pursuing oh, them if that's what's the reality anyway. So, so uh, the standard, the standard is always active. I mean, uh, even if uh, RA one, for instance, uh, has not been modified the last, the last release, the GSMA document is still active. So we may care about uh, the different uh, output we we have. There is a Git output, but uh, the GSMA output must be highlighted as a as an I official think, document. Yeah, absolutely. The GSMA is super. Let's let's call it that way. Yeah. yeah. Reminder, five minutes through photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's We're good. We're good. I just, I just want to rephrase maybe what I was trying to say more clearly. I think if there are already adopters, then work with you and, you know, push the them. The problem is we don't know. Okay. So, <laughs> that, that's a typical, we have in all. So yeah. nobody tells you when they download your open source project, they shouldn't. And, and so that's, that's one thing. But I'm sensing that you are what you have a desire to relaunch some marketing efforts and for yeah. that i would say it's very important to decide who is the target persona because yeah. i'm not sure it's operators anymore and i'm not sure you're absolutely it's right vendors anymore I think and, it's maybe, and maybe cloud service providers who were not even on your radar when you started and okay they were are the biggest yeah. target audience so you need to be very careful about who you are who you're addressing so here's a thought okay. you're you're absolutely right uh, the the cloud service providers were not on our radar at the beginning the cloud service providers are pitching to very hard to the telecoms right now so that may be a good target audience to go hey we have a we have a body of standards if you will of open source of how to support open source, uh, how to support telco workloads that you're, you know, that, that the telcos contributed to that you want to pay attention to this stuff. Or even better start contributing because or they're contributing, not, they right. haven't waited for Anuket in the past years. I mean, Google has a telco cloud offering. That's the group that eventually contributed Nephew, but it came out of their, uh, telco cloud offering yeah and but microsoft used to have one maybe it's not as microsoft uh, has a telco cloud yeah. offering that they haven't sold to anybody except by yeah, buying yeah, i heard it has some <laughs> end user but we're not here to value the market okay so, uh, so but, uh, 
Yeah. I, I remember the discussion from many of these meetings. I mean, when the first yeah. one was where the vendors joined, I started asking that you as telecoms ask for vendors to formally respond where they are regarding Anoket. And my yeah. suggestion at the time was don't even bother reading the response. The idea is not that you get smarter by listening to that, but to get vendors to pay attention. If as telcos, yeah. you don't even ask for that, why should they care? These companies that you just mentioned, if this is not part of RFI, RFP process, they have, they don't have to have any opinion of it. Why should they bother? So yes, it's I, the whole that, thing again and again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is, it is written. I can, I can tell from Nokia's side, it was only Orange who ever asked for any Anukat. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so that, that, that's that one. The, the other one is in terms of adoption. We do have some telcos well represented here by some of you that yep. could arrange the quote that claims so. And then we need some promotion through LFN channels. And I'll think about what, what other channels maybe I can contribute where some of us come and promote this whole thing. What are the assets and claim some adoption and promote it beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, we need to stop here. So yeah. we have to get to the picture. Yep. But this was <laughs> this was a good conversation. Absolutely. I will upload the recording to yep. the wiki side. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Hey. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.